Welcome YouTubers to EAA. I'm Mike and yes, I blame Street Speed 717 for this. All right, so before everybody jumps to the defense of Street Speed 717, let me just say I like Mike. I like his channel. I've, I've been watching it for over three years. I've been a subscriber. I think he is a great guy. So don't feel like you need to defend him. There's absolutely nothing against him. Um, I had that happen when I did the video calling out Hoobie's Garage. A bunch of people jumped out there and said, what are you talking about with Hoobie and what's going on and this and that. Great guys, great channels. I enjoy their channels very much. I seem like really great guys. As a matter of fact, Mike, when I was first thinking about starting this channel, oh, maybe six months or a year before I did, I actually sent him a comment and asked him what kind of equipment he uses in his videos. And he told me GoPros, and that's really the reason I use GoPros now is because of Mike. So that being said, it is true. He is somewhat responsible for me actually buying this truck. And I will explain. About a month ago, maybe a little bit more, he did this video. And when I saw the video, I was in awe of that truck. It turns out that a Ford dealership in Ohio by the name of Beachmont Ford, uh, they will sell you a 5.0 Mustang or F-150 and they would put a Whipple supercharger on top, get it tuned for you, and give you a 700 horsepower fire breathing machine. When I saw Mike's video, I was like, I gotta have one. I mean, I was giddy. So I emailed uh, Beachmont Ford and I talked back and forth with one of the salesmen and actually picked out a truck. They had a slightly used 2018 uh, four wheel drive crew cab, uh, which is the four door by the way, pickup and so when it was all said and done with the supercharger out the door delivered to my door basically here in California was just a little over fifty thousand dollars which I didn't think was that bad and I was extremely tempted but then I got to thinking about it and I thought well I really don't want to have a car payment and I really don't want to pull any more money out of my retirement I've already done that enough for vehicles and I really just could not see doing that again so I went on ahead and passed on that vehicle but it got me to thinking about muscle trucks and what is out there. What muscle trucks are out there that are more reasonably priced? Now, first and foremost, since I am a Chevy guy, I went to Chevrolet and I thought about, let's get by this guy real quick. So I consider the Silverado SS, certainly the early model, like the 91, 92, 93, that era. Um, but that truck just never really did a lot for me. I don't know, I've never driven one, so I can't say anything against it. Uh, just, just me personally, wasn't something I was looking for. So then I started thinking about the newer one, the 2003 through 2005 Chevy SS that they did. Now that was an extended cab, it had an LS based 6.0 motor, it turned out 345 horsepower, and I did consider that, that was not a bad option. But to be honest with you, I actually test drove one, uh, it's been several years ago. It was back when the really the fastest vehicle I'd ever been in was an LS1 Corvette. So, and I remember thinking I wasn't that impressed with the truck at the time. As a matter of fact, I even got it back to the lot and the salesman was asking me what I thought and I told him it's kind of slow and he laughed and I said, actually I'm serious. <laughs> Getting back to the story, um, I know those Silverado SS's are fast. Don't get me wrong, don't, don't hate on me, but it just didn't impress me that much. So then I started thinking about the Viper pickup. I mean, it's got the Viper motor, 500 horsepower, and really an impressive truck. And I've actually test driven one of those too. I drove a regular cab, a six speed manual truck, and it was definitely fast. It was, I'd say, faster than this. Um, but I don't know, it just. I don't know if maybe it's because the Viper I owned uh, some years back just didn't really impress me or what it was. I don't know what, what, I don't know what the thing is with me and Vipers, but I've never been over the moon about them and I know a lot of people are. So I kind of scratched the whole Viper truck thing. Plus I would have wanted the automatic. I would have wanted the four door truck um, to make it a little bit more practical because 
this is a daily driver. This is something I'm going to use to drive around and, and do things with. So uh, those were, you know, in the mid twenties and I just didn't want to spend that much money. So I started thinking about the Ford Lightning and quite honestly, I had never driven a Ford Lightning. I'd never even ridden in a Ford Lightning. So I started doing my research. Of course I was on uh, YouTube and Googling and checking out videos and everything like that. And what I saw, I was very impressed with. Now, if you guys don't know the history on the Ford Lightning, uh, Ford started turning out these Lightnings back in like 92, 93, I think it was. And it was a 3.8 liter V8. They basically were trying to compete with Chevy's SS at the time. And for the time, the truck was pretty impressive. It was a good performer, but they only ran them for a couple of years. And then they took a little hiatus. And then in 99, they came out with the new and improved Ford Lightning with a 5.4 liter V8, a supercharger on top, and they were turning out 360 horsepower and 440 pound-feet of torque. Then in 2001, Ford upped the game, made a few tweaks, and bumped the horsepower to 380 horsepower and 450 pound-feet of torque, which most people do agree is underrated in these trucks. Uh, these trucks usually will dyno stock with no modifications at all, somewhere between 340 to 360 horsepower at the wheel. So they were probably a little closer to 400, maybe even closer to 500 pound-feet of torque, but pretty impressive. And you also get that supercharger whine, which you guys know me, you know I love that sound. It is like a symphony. And quite honestly, the supercharger in this truck, even just putting through the gears, you can hear it so much better than you can in my GT500. It's amazing. So. I started looking around for a Lightning. That was what I wanted. Um, I actually ended up finding this one. Uh, it was about an hour and a half for me over in Concord, and the price was fairly reasonable. The guy was asking 11,400, which based on what I saw out there on Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace was a pretty good price. So I ended up going over and checking it out, driving it, and I liked it. Um, I talked him down to 10,000, which I thought was a pretty good deal, and I'm very happy with the truck. It, it's a good performing truck. I'm not gonna say it's incredibly fast um, because it really isn't in my opinion, but I know that these things respond really, really well to tweaks. So some tweaks might be coming down the road, nothing major, but maybe a few tweaks to give it a little bit more, but man, I mean, you step down on it. That's just... I mean, that sound alone is worth the price of admission. Oh man, it's beautiful. It's amazing. I love it. So while we're in the truck, let me just tell you a little bit about the whole driving experience in the truck. Now, my mom owns a 2001 Ford F-150 extended cab. It's got the 4.6 in it. And um, I've driven that truck a lot over the past 10 years. I've put a lot of miles in the truck. I know it very well. So comparing this truck to that truck, Really, there's quite a big difference. Obviously, this truck has a lot more power with the 5.4, the supercharger. Uh, it's, it's notable. It's, it's a big difference. There is no doubt about that. So that's the first and most obvious thing. Uh, this thing is definitely a stiffer ride. There's no two ways about it. You really do notice that. But the seats are more comfortable than in the other um, F-150. Um, I feel like my seating position is more comfortable in this truck. Where in the 2001, I don't know, I just sit awkward with the steering wheel, but this, I feel pretty comfortable with it. I, I really do like the seating position. And, um, you know, it's a fairly quiet truck inside. It's not that loud. Uh, this does have some aftermarket exhaust, but it's not that noisy as you can tell. Um, it's a lot of fun to drive. I drove it all the way back from Concord. The truck never missed a beat. Definitely likes fuel, but I didn't buy it for the fuel economy, so I really don't care. I'm okay with that. Um, it's geared a little lower for more performance at the 373 rear end. So you do notice that when you're going down the freeway, it's say, you know, 70 or what have you, you're attacking around 2,500 RPM. So using a little bit more motor than say my mom's 2001, but that's okay. I, I don't mind that. It still runs freeway speeds without any problems at all. And like I keep saying, it's a lot of fun to drive. Like I said, this truck's fun. <laughs> Now 
this truck does have drag radials on the back, so it hooks up pretty good. I can definitely get the tires to break loose, but for the most part, it hooks pretty well. It's got some nittos on it, and um, as you can see from the opening shot, you kind of got to work to get it to spin, um, but it, it goes pretty nicely. Like I said, not the fastest vehicle I own, not the fastest vehicle I've ever been in, but it's just a lot of fun. Uh, kind of an iconic vehicle because they only made them between 99 and 2004 and then that was it So if you want a more modern day style lightning You need to go to Beachmont Ford and get one with the supercharger and the 700 horsepower and all that crazy stuff um, I just didn't want to spend that kind of money. I call me crazy I might have been a little crazy, but this is a lot of fun. This is a very close second. How's that? So let's head back to the shop We'll take a little walk around the truck. I can talk specifically about this truck, what's been done to it, um, and maybe talk about some future plans for the truck down the road. All right, so we have here a 2002 Ford Lightning, and we'll kind of start from the front and go back, tell you all the things that's been done to the truck. Uh, obviously, it does have an aftermarket grill, as you can see with the SVT in there. I think that's kind of cool. Uh, it has HIDs all the way around, front and back, interior, under the hood, so that's kind of cool. Uh, it has the stock lightning rims in chrome with the black center cast, which I wasn't too sure if I would like that or not, but actually seeing it in person, I do kind of like it. I think it looks pretty good. Uh, truck has a couple little dings. It definitely has some scratches, which as we all know, black shows so incredibly well. But, you know, that's okay. Like I said, it's a daily driver truck. Uh, it has fairly new tires on it. There's some drag radials that the uh, previous owner put on the back, and they actually hook pretty well. Uh, you can see in the bed, it's got the indoor-outdoor carpeting, a little stained, but no worse for the wear. Um, it's got a little ding right there. Like I said, it's not perfect, but I didn't want it perfect. Uh, I know he said it has that MagnaFlow exhaust, so it's not loud, but it's got a nice rumble. It sounds pretty good. Uh, front tires are in really good shape. Uh, they're hand cooks. Uh, also, the previous owner did tint the windshield, and I went on ahead and had the side windows tinted to match. Then, of course, the back window is the slider rear window, and it is tinted also. Um, it does have kind of a little mark right there, as you guys can see. I assume that's from a bed cover that was on it before. Uh, the previous owner did have the bed cover for it, but he didn't have the keys for the lock and the bed cover was in kind of rough shape So I opted not to take it. I did order a bed cover for it should be in next week. So I'll have that put on So inside the truck is really pretty clean uh, If you guys notice these door panels are kind of shrinking up and coming loose there uh, It's the same thing on the passenger's door. So I'm gonna have those redone definitely and then the seat, the bolster's worn down, and it's been sewn right here. And then, of course, the bolters, bolster is getting worn right there. So I'm going to have this part done. Uh, the steering wheel is absolutely trashed. That's why it's got this cover on it right now. So I'm going to have that rewrapped. And um, then, like I said, the other door panel over there redone. And that's really about it on the interior. The rest of the interior is actually pretty clean and pretty good shape. It does have an aftermarket JVC Bluetooth head unit and then it's got kicker speakers in the four stock locations and the stereo doesn't sound bad perhaps I might put a subwoofer in it someday but um, I don't know I, I it just depends I've got other things that I want to do to the truck before I do that so um, that's kind of low on the priority list so under the hood we have the 5.4 liter V8 with a cold air intake and of course that awesome sounding supercharger sitting on top um, it's very clean underneath the hood uh, if I didn't mention the the truck has 153 almost 154,000 miles on it but the motor was replaced by Ford uh, back in 2015 apparently at 125,000 miles so I mean this truck has less than 30,000 miles on the motor so really the only thing I have to worry about is a transmission and the rear end which hopefully will last as long as I have it I don't plan on putting a lot of miles on the truck but I do plan to drive it uh, I figure I'll just switch off between this and the Buick as my daily driver. That's why I didn't want a super clean, low mileage truck. I wanted something that I could get in and drive and not worry about too much. I would have preferred not to have black, but hey, beggars can't be choosy. And it does look really good, I have to admit. Just a little more effort to keep it clean. 
Okay, so I am gonna end the video, and as you figured out by now, I was just joking in the beginning. Um, I love the truck, I'm having a good time with it, so I, I really cannot blame anyone for influencing me to go out and buy a vehicle that I'm enjoying. So um, it's all in good fun, it's all in good times. If you guys like the video, if you like the new vehicle, please do give me a thumbs up, I would greatly appreciate it. If you are stopping in for the first time and haven't already, definitely subscribe to the channel. My Instagram and PO Box is in the description below. God bless, take care, have an absolutely amazing day. Okay, so as far as projects for the truck, um, I was actually planning to do a probably a two, maybe three part video series on all my vehicles and talking about projects for them and everything like that, but I think I'm gonna exclude my daily drivers. So if you guys don't follow the channel, I do have an 03 Buick Regal GS. It's got the supercharged 3800 V8, and my plan is to do a stage two kit on it. That's the plan, and that'll net me probably about another 15% performance-wise out of it. It's just a pulley intake and a different CPU. So that's something that may be coming. Like I said, that's the plan. Plans can change, but that is the plan for that one. As far as this truck goes, I definitely want to get it lowered at least a couple of inches. I like the way it sits. I just think it needs to go a couple inches lower, but I don't want to slam it. I don't want to do like a four inch drop or really even a three inch drop. I, I think about a two inch drop would be perfect. Um, I do have a bed cover that I ordered for this truck and it's coming. It'll probably be in next week and I'll have it put on. Um, other than that, a few cleanup things and maybe possibly I'll put a subwoofer in here just to give it a little more base for the stereo, although it doesn't sound very bad right now. Another thing I was thinking about doing is having this truck tuned and putting a different pulley on it. Um, but driving it back from shooting this video, I stepped into it and I actually watched the boost gauge, which I haven't done before, and it goes up to 10 pounds and this thing pegged. It pegged quite a ways past. I would guess it was probably, if the gauge is accurate, probably giving me 12 or 13 pounds of boost, which I've heard is quite a bit for these trucks. Uh, stock, it should make anywhere from eight to 10 pounds. And um, obviously if it's making 12 to 13, it's quite a bit more boost. So I may have to kind of look into that. Um, Cause like I said, the trucks, I mean, it pulls good. It, it's definitely responsive, but I don't know. I don't feel like it's maybe a you know 400 plus rear wheel horsepower vehicle, but I don't know. Gage could be wrong. I could be wrong. Who knows? You guys can let me know what you think.